Hey, fellow investors, are you looking to be able to evaluate a property's worth? You probably come across Zestimate or Rent Estimates as a great way in order to assess what a property value should be worth. Well, in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to get that exact information without having to go into Zillow's site and actually do it programmatically using Python. My name is Ariel Herrera, your fellow data scientist with the Analytics Ariel channel, where we bridge the gap between real estate and technology. I love using data, having automation, and being able to bring that together to make really sound business decisions. So if you do too, please make sure to subscribe to get the latest content in tech and real estate. As well, like this content if you want to see more of data and Python tutorials. All right, let's get started. So right now I'm on Zillow's homepage and I'm selecting my search criteria, which is Brandon, Florida. And within that, I'm looking at a property here as for sale. And we could see that there's context here, such as estimate. So the property is for sale for $339,000. However, Zestimate says that it's really worth three nineteen. dollars So what exactly is Zestimate and why do we care about it? So if we hover over it, Zestimate is basically Zillow's best estimate of a home's market value. And it's basically a starting point to be able to assess based on comparables, so properties that recently sold in the area that are similar to this home, seeing what those prices sold for, and then aggregating those together and comparing to see what this house would likely appraise for or what its worth is. So as we see, Zestimate also incorporates many different factors into their model, such as listing price of other properties, home facts, probably if the other properties are similar in bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, as well as neighborhood details. Neighborhood details is really important because it shows that they're not just assessing any property in the neighborhood that has the same criteria like bedrooms and bathrooms. They're taking into account, is this house walkable and only maybe compare it to other house houses that are also with high walkability scores as well. So what we want to do is to be able to extract this information. And if you've seen the last video, we actually detailed by using the Zillow.com API endpoints on how we were able to actually get all properties that were for sale and then being able to actually get information on those properties that were really detailed. And this included information like Zestimate, time on Zillow, descriptions, and more. But what if you already have a list of property addresses? So you're not really looking to get what's for sale. You only care to get descriptions or details on a specific set of addresses. So in order to do that, this API requires you to pass in a ZPID. ZPID is Zillow's identifier that they've established for each property. So it's unique per property. And it's not the MLS ID, so it's completely reliant on Zillow. Now, if you just have a list of properties of street name, city, zip code, you're not going to have ZPID. So how do you actually get that? Well, if we wanted to get that information manually, we can come back to this listing. And we could see here at the URL that there's a ZPID right at the end. Now, as you guys know, this would be highly disencouraged and manual to actually go through each of the properties in whatever list you have and then go into Zillow grabbing the CPID. So luckily Zillow has still allowed this free access for their API called get search results and this essentially allows us to pass in an address and get back information including the ZID. What's unfortunate is that Zillow used to have other free APIs that had a little bit more detail, like comparables as well. That has been since turned off, but you could always check other videos that I have to get data that's very similar in comparables from other sources. But what's good here is that we're going to be able to get the ZPID, which is what we want. Now, if we go over to GitHub, we actually have a user who's already created a package called Python Zillow. And this allows us to very easily be able to use Zillow's API with just only one single line of code. Unfortunately, as I said previously, the other 
APIs that Zillow had, like get estimate, get comps, get deep search results, those are turned off. So this will not all work, but the top one does, which is what we need. So I'm going to go back to the original notebook that we worked with in the last video. And for those of you who are coming new to this, I highly encourage to watch that video first and then come back here. So at the very end, we have a section called Zillow ZPID. And what we want to do is install that library, that package that was created by that user on GitHub. So to do that in Google Collab, we have an explanation mark before pip and we install our package. And the queue is just to make it quiet so we're not going to see as many lines return back. So I'm going to hit run, which you could do here by clicking the play button or by hitting shift enter. Now once that is installed, it's going to have a check mark. And I've created just a simple table, a data frame of addresses. So in my scenario, we had previously gone to for sale properties and we had ones like 127 Lithia Pinecrest Road. So in this test scenario, I want to be able to get data back for properties that are next to those properties that are for sale. Maybe I want to see more information on those so I can make a better idea of comparisons. So I've created very simply a data frame using pandas. I have a dictionary, my keys are address and postal code, and then within this I have all the addresses and the postal codes. Now if we go back down, you need to be able to get a Zillow API key. You could do that going back to their site. So if we go here, it says the parameters for the API and then click here to get your API key. So be sure to do that there. And then once you do, you're going to be able to come back here and you could just paste your key in here within these strings. But for me, I've already have this set into another CSV file. So I'm going to just call that and have my key. Now the next step is importing the actual library. So import Zillow. We run this, and now we're going to actually try to get the ZPID for each of these. So to start, if we go back to GitHub, we could see that we need to be able to create this API, Zillow Valuation API instance. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in here. I'm going to label this Create Instance and change this to Zillow API. Now what we want to do is to get a list of ZPIDs. So I'm going to create an empty list. Next, we want to basically get ZPID for each of these addresses. So we want to loop through or iterate through each row in this table. Great, so what we're going to do here is we're iterating through the rows and for each row, we're getting the index and the row. Now we can easily be able to get the address and postal codes by putting in the column name as we iterate through. So let's do that right now. I have a underscore behind it just because this variable is going to continue changing. Um, just one of the ways that I like to set up my code. Now if we run this, we could see for each single row that we're printing out the address, for each row, so 125 Lithia, 125 Lithia, and we're also printing out the postal code, which we see here. So we know that the variables that we're assigning are correct. Now next, we want to actually go to the Zillow API and get that ZPID. So if we look here, we could see that this is going to go to the get search results. So let's copy that, bring that over, and we could change this to search results. And our key is called Zillow API key. And we could just add underscores to match our variable names. Great, so if we were to just run this right now, we could see name API is not defined. It's because we changed the name to Zillow API, so we can copy this and replace it as well. And we see this runs okay. We haven't actually returned anything yet. Uh, if we actually copy this, and paste it, we could see that we have some information. And if we look at all the contents of it, we could see we have information like ZPID's estimate as well. 
However, I have seen that this estimate does not always come through. So the only thing I'm really looking to get here is ZPID. So if I add ZPID to the N, we could see that the ZPID is there. So the last step that we want to do is append this to our empty data frame. And now we can run this once more. This ran fine. Now we can actually add this list into our column. So now we have a column called ZPID. We'll name it ZPID. And now we can see that we have for each of these addresses the corresponding ZPID. This is really, really great because now we could take this back into what we did in the previous video, which is running this through a loop. So we go through a loop where what we're looking to do is get the property details as we discussed. And what we're going to get back is information of 205 columns of data like the property tax rate, ZPID, which we already have, Zestimate, bathrooms, bedrooms, zoning, like there's so much information here. It's absolutely amazing. So I'm going to copy this code that we ran through previously and bring it towards the bottom. Some things are going to change. So our ZPID list is actually going to be the same here. So we call it the same variable, so we don't have to change that. And it looks like we don't have to change anything here. So if you haven't watched a previous video, please note that you need to set a time limit because this API that's created by API Maker only allows you to hit the API and make a request once per second if you're using basic, two if you're using pro, and then three if you're doing ultra. So in our case, we're going to set and make sure that every time we make a request in order to get property details, that we're stopping for at least a second and a half. So we could run this now, and it's basically going through each of those ZPIDs, those three, and it's getting the property detail. Now it's done, it only took six seconds, and what we could do is go back and copy the code that we had previously when we looked at all for sale properties, bring that towards the bottom, paste it, and we could see that we have the information three rows, 214 columns, I guess it brought back a little bit more, and we have a lot of detail, even HOA fees too. But it's a lot more useful just to shrink this down to columns that we care about. So copying the previous code, going back down, pasting it, and now we could see for each of those, so those three addresses that were not for sale, however, we we're able to get the ZPIDs, and then that allowed us to get detailed information, like what the price last sold for, Zestimate, rent Zestimate, bedrooms, bathrooms, and more. Now, one of the things to know is sometimes you're not going to get the Zestimate back. I just noticed that it doesn't come back. Not sure why exactly. Maybe this one is a mansion and that's why it doesn't have any comparables to it. However, there are other resources like Realtermal that you can get more information on comp valuations as well as using Redfin and Realtor. So if you're interested in really diving deep into data, Zillow, and being able to use metrics like cash flow and really assess if a property is a good deal or not, then I highly suggest for you to sign up for my free course that's coming fall of 2021 called U.S. Real Estate Property Data Course. It is free if you sign up before the course is released. As well, if you already have purchased one of my previous courses, you will receive free access to this course too. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe if you have not already.